Imagine a ship that could fly above the water's surface, defying the constraints of traditional vessels. Well, such a marvel did exist, and it was known as the Plain View. In this video, we'll embark on a journey to unravel the intriguing story of this extraordinary ship and what ultimately happened to it. The Plain View wasn't your typical ship. It could lift itself out of the water, granting it exceptional speed and maneuverability. But why did the US Navy invest in such an unconventional vessel? To understand this, we need to step back in time to the height of the Cold War. In 1969, the US Navy faced a formidable challenge, the Soviet Union's fast and capable nuclear-powered submarines. These subs could shadow American carrier groups across the globe and launch devastating strikes. Traditional naval assets struggled to keep up with these agile threats, pushing the Navy to explore unconventional solutions. Let's dive into this remarkable tale and discover what happened to the ship that could fly. The Birth of Hydrofalls The Birth of Hydrofalls is a testament to innovation in boat design. In 1906, an Italian engineer made a groundbreaking discovery by incorporating underwater foils or wings beneath the water's surface to propel boats faster. These foils, far from mere decorations, served a critical purpose. They lifted the boat's hull out of the water, significantly reducing drag and enabling much higher speeds than traditional vessels. This discovery laid the foundation for hydrofalls as we know them today. The core concept is elegant in its simplicity. Lift a boat's hull above the waterline using underwater wings to minimize drag, allowing for swift movement. However, the journey from concept to practical application took time. A decade later, Alexander Graham Bell took the hydrofall concept to new heights, quite literally. He constructed a hydrofall boat that not only validated the concept, but also set a new marine speed record. These early experiments showcased hydrofall technology's immense potential to revolutionize maritime transportation. Despite these advancements, the US Navy initially paid limited attention to hydrofalls due to their primary suitability for calmer waters. This sets the stage for understanding why hydrofall technology had not been a focal point for naval development until later years. Two types of hydrofalls. Hydrofalls aren't a one-size-fits-all solution. They come in two distinct types based on their design and operational characteristics, each with its own unique advantages and challenges. First, we have the surface skimming hydrofalls. These hydrofalls operate close to the water's surface, providing stability during calm conditions. However, they become susceptible to the effects of waves and rough seas. Therefore, they are best suited for use on lakes and waterways where wave interference is minimal. On the other hand, we have submerged falls. These hydrofalls are positioned entirely underwater, allowing them to operate independently of waves and rough sea conditions above the water's surface. This capability makes them suitable for smooth operation even in challenging conditions at sea. However, there's a catch with submerged falls. Their design isn't dynamically stable, meaning they require continuous adjustments to maintain a level position. The choice of submerged foils for the plain view, our star of the show, was significant because it allowed for stable operations in rough seas. This made it an ideal candidate for anti-submarine warfare against fast-moving Soviet nuclear-powered submarines. So, as we move forward in this journey, remember these two types of hydrofoils as they play a crucial role in the plain view story. Hydrofalls as a solution to the Soviet threat Hydrofalls emerged as a crucial solution to the pressing Soviet threat that confronted the US Navy during the Cold War. In the 1960s, the Navy faced a formidable challenge. The Soviet Union had significantly bolstered its naval capabilities, notably with fast and highly capable nuclear-powered submarines. These Soviet submarines achieve remarkable speeds hitting 41 knots when fully submerged, outpacing any US ship, even torpedoes. Their ability to dive to extraordinary depths made interception extremely challenging. This capability allowed the Soviets to shadow American carrier groups worldwide and launch sudden, devastating strikes. Conventional naval assets like destroyers and frigates, equipped with advanced sonar, could detect incoming Soviet submarines. However, their lack of speed hindered their effectiveness in closing the gap and engaging these fast-moving threats. This dilemma forced the US Navy to explore unconventional solutions. They needed significantly faster ships to counter the Soviet threat effectively. 
At this crucial juncture, the Navy turned to hydrofoil technology despite its prior limited use, recognizing its potential to address the evolving challenge posed by Soviet submarines. Prototype hydrofoils and the plain view size. With the need for speed and maneuverability paramount encountering the Soviet submarine threat, the U.S. Navy embarked on a program involving prototype hydrofoil vessels. By 1970, they had four such prototypes under evaluation, each representing a unique approach to hydrofoil technology. Among these prototypes, the plain view stood out as the largest, weighing in at a whopping 320 tons. At that time, it held the distinction of being the world's largest hydrofoil. But the Navy's interest extended beyond the plain view alone. They had conceptual designs for even larger ships on the drawing board, some of which envisioned destroyer escort sized hydrofoils that could even accommodate helicopters, thus expanding their versatility in naval operations. Testing the hydrofoils. Thorough testing was essential before deploying hydrofoils like the plain view to counter the Soviet threat. These vessels were meant to operate in the open ocean, facing severe storms and rough seas. The testing process involves subjecting them to various challenging conditions, evaluating their performance in rough seas, and assessing their combat potential. These hydrofoils, unique with elements from the aviation realm, posed a departure from traditional naval technology. This fusion of naval and aviation technologies brought new challenges and opportunities, making the testing phase vital for understanding their capabilities and limitations. The plain view, the most ambitious among the experimental ships, played a pivotal role in shaping large, ocean-going hydrofoil development. Its design and performance offered valuable insights into hydrofoil's potential as a solution to the Soviet submarine threat. Drawbacks of hydrofoils Hydrofoils had their share of drawbacks, including the use of weight-sensitive aluminum hulls, which lacked the strength of traditional steel hulls. This limitation meant hydrofoils carried less armor and armament, reducing their combat capabilities compared to conventional warships. Additionally, their intricate foil and dual propulsion systems made them less dependable and more maintenance-intensive, consuming a significant portion of the Navy's budget. By the mid-1970s, the Navy had developed more practical anti-submarine warfare alternatives, primarily relying on aircraft. These aircraft were both more effective and cost-efficient in tracking and hunting submarines than hydrofoils. Consequently, large ocean-going hydrofoils like the plain view appeared less compelling than when the project was initiated. Shifting naval strategies and evolving threat landscapes played pivotal roles in the decline of hydrofoil development within the U.S. Navy. Despite their potential, hydrofoils had limitations that needed addressing. The Decline of Hydrofoil Development In 1978, the U.S. Navy made a pivotal decision slashing the budget for experimental hydrofoil development from $2.2 million annually to zero. This marked a turning point, shifting the Navy's focus away from hydrofoil technology as a primary solution to its strategic challenges. This decline mirrored broader changes in strategic thinking. The optimistic 1960s gave way to the revaluation of priorities in subsequent decades. By the 1970s, more practical alternatives emerged for countering fast-moving submarines, with aircraft proving more effective and cost-efficient. These pragmatic alternatives diminished the appeal of large ocean-going hydrofoils like the plain view. This shift in naval warfare, evolving threat scenarios, and budget constraints collectively diminished interest in hydrofoil technology within the U.S. Navy. The Plainview and the Hydrofoil program, though groundbreaking, did not become mainstream solutions for naval challenges. This marked the conclusion of an era in naval technology, underscoring the adaptability and evolving priorities of modern military forces. From its groundbreaking hydrofoil technology to its dual propulsion system and the challenges it faced, the Plainview represents a pivotal chapter in naval history. Yet, it also shines a light on the practical limitations of hydrofoils in the face of evolving threats and changing priorities. As we wrap up this exploration, remember that while the plain view may not have become a mainstream solution, it played a crucial role in shaping the Navy's strategic thinking and technology development. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the plain view story. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing tales from the world of technology and history.